Hello everyone, I'm High Treason, and welcome to Duke Nukem 3D Mapping Taboo, Episode 1. Conveyor Belts, or SE24. They're one of Duke Nukem 3D's many mechanics, and the game does have quite a lot for its time. Being used to levels which were fairly static, as was the case with Doom, it was quite novel the first time you went in Toxic Dump, got pushed to the end of a belt and were picked up by a crane, but in all honesty they're not used very much throughout the game, and probably less so in user maps. But overall, they could be somewhat overlooked, and they have a few quirks, if what doesn't in this game, that may well be useful. A lot of these relate to item movement on the conveyor belt, in that if you put sprites on a conveyor belt, there are some exceptions in regard to actors like enemies and players, but for the most part sprites will move on the belt, but not at the same speed that the floor pans for whatever reason. You get used to it. On the other hand, if there's a white wall at the end of that belt, then it's going to push the sprite out of bounds, and this could have disastrous consequences. I mean that sprite is still moving, and I think that has something to do with it being out of bounds, that when the game tries to run code on it, it checks the sector number, which will return minus one, i.e. out of bounds, and so it will never bother to update anything about the sprite's properties ever again. Because I'm pretty certain running code on sprites that are out of bounds isn't a good idea, and in fact that may well crash the game. Of course this sprite is going to crash the game anyway, but the fastest I've ever gotten it to do this is about 28 days, and in most cases it's going to take a couple of yards. Let's face it, it's not really worth worrying about. Is this at all useful? It might be. I mean, for one thing, if you want some sprites to do a lap on a conveyor belt, you're going to run into problems. I mean, it works fine for a while, but if we speed the game up, you can see they drift farther and farther away. Because like most movement in the game, there seems to be some form of interpolation going on and a bunch of rounding errors. I'm not entirely certain what happens in the curve, but we can observe what happens in the game, and that's generally enough. Now, this is no good. You might be able to use a crane somewhere in the middle of the belt, to get around this, but then you're going to need fully active sprites that have a fall, like the barrels, which will make them fall back towards the ground, and it's no good for our decorative sprites here. And that's quite limited, and that's no good. On the other hand, we know we can push things out of bounds, and, well, they keep moving. And if there's another sector in the way, well, they'll crash into that sector, and then finally the properties get updated. Yeah, we can use this. You see now, if we push the sprites through these white walls into Out of Bounds, yes, they'll keep moving in the Out of Bounds, but now we have a hidden sector inside these, these walls here, which is another conveyor belt at the same height, and generally the height must match. As soon as the sprite reaches this sector, its properties get updated again, to the ones of this new conveyor belt, which is going in a different direction, towards another conveyor belt through another white wall. And so now the items will do a lap, and they'll never drift out of alignment. Yeah, that solved that problem. The only issue is, you can't really hide the fact it's a white wall without having to be a little creative, which I haven't done here, but, well, you can generally think of something. In fact, as we know the sprites are going to be dead center on the belt, we can make those white walls extremely small, to the point that they're almost invisible. This isn't the best way of doing it necessarily, but if you absolutely had to, well, it's possible. And what else can we use this for? Well, as we can overlap sectors in this engine, we could overlap conveyor belt sectors. Yeah, we could push something through a white wall into another conveyor belt that goes in the opposite direction and make a loop. We've got a text scroller. In this case, if you want to make something like a text scroller, the hidden overlapping belt is probably going to do well to have the same sprites in it, in this case the same text, but flipped. Conveniently in this case all we had to do was copy the sector and press X. You probably don't want overlapping vertices like I have in here, and really this one's quite bulky, but I figured it was best that way so it's easier for to reverse engineer in the example map that I'll include a link to. There are some limits though, I mean for one thing the GP speed sprites are going to want to be set to powers of two, or else there are issues and things tend to drift out of alignment and get mangled. There's also the fact that due to the crappy movement interpolation and rounding problems, you really don't want those sprites aligned anywhere smaller than grid size four on a good day, and really grid size three is generally the safe limit. Anything smaller than that, and they're going to end up drifting around slightly, and it's going to look ugly. Also, the faster you have the belt going, 
you're going to need more overhang, or else the game isn't going to process in time where the sprite's going to be, and just assume it's somewhere past the end of the overlap, now in out of bounds or some other sector you don't really want it in. And we already know what happens then. Of course, if you get really creative, you can make it do some ridiculous things. And how is this useful if you were to design a level? Well, we could have some distant traffic, or we could have some trains. These ones are a bit ugly and actually have alignment issues that I've left alone so you can see what happens. You could have text scrollers and things moving around on a belt. And the thing is, even if the items aren't lined up properly to begin with, they'll generally end up aligned properly because of the way this works. The entry point of the overlapping belt is, well, I think you can figure it out for yourself. And remember, you do have a DND bug command in the game to dump the map in its current state if you ever want to see what's going on at any given time. The belts even have some quirks that I'm not fully familiar with yet, such as this one. Yeah, maybe the height isn't as important as I first thought, but I'm not entirely sure as to the limits of this behaviour, and we may have to revisit them someday. In fact, I think we probably will, as there are a few more things we can do with conveyor belts, as, well, as they use an SE sprite, that means you can stack other effects on them, and in some cases this is very useful. However, for today I'm going to leave it here, now we know how to abuse this effect a little bit. Yes, it's largely cosmetic, but making a level look better is almost as important as making it play well. And so, I'm High Treason, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time for something, I don't know. <laughs>